Jack Armstrong, Jack Armstrong, Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. See how you can run this without an engine, Jack. <laughs> it's got an engine, a jet engine. You have no carburetor, you have no cylinders, no distributor. It doesn't use any. Betty, bring those blueprints over so Blake can look at them. It may not have any carburetor or cylinders, but it's still 50 miles an hour faster than any other car built. Catch him. Get in, Billy. Blake, open the gate. See if you can catch him. I'll call an ambulance. too fast for us. Yeah, yet it hopped up. But it wasn't too fast for my car. It's quite a car you got there. What are you going to do with it? Well, I'm going to get it tuned up and take it up to the flat Sunday and try for a new speed record. What we saw, you're a cinch. 
Let's go. Good going, Jack. Hello, Mr. Garfield. Hello, Blake. This shipment will be picked up from Mr. Gregory Pierce. Keep a close watch on it until they call for it. Why, are you expecting trouble? No, but this equipment is very valuable and I wouldn't want anything to happen to it. Very well, sir. Maybe we'll get a reward, too. Well, tell me about it. Oh, later, the most important thing is we proved that this car can really travel. And if you don't believe it, just look at my hair. What's this I hear about you joining the police department? See the afternoon paper, Uncle Jim, and you'll read a great story. I don't doubt it. Now, if you're ready to go back to work, come into the lab. We have something new on atomic power for planes that might interest you, especially Jack. We're here to pick up some stuff for the Pierce Exporting Company. Where do we find it? Right over there waiting for you. The guard will identify it. Thank you. That Mr. Pierce has certainly been buying a lot of equipment lately. Yes, yeah, technical, scientific equipment. Most of it's resold through his exporting company. What's this about using atomic energy for air power, Uncle Jim? You don't mean you actually have a plane like that. Well, not exactly. But the experts all agree it's a definite possibility. Vic Hardy has spent weeks in the lab doing basic research. We're not ready to make it public yet, but he's prepared a complete report of his findings to date. Come in. Hello, Jim. Are you busy? No, 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 Pierce. Come on in. I didn't expect to see you so soon. The truck just arrived for your shipment. Yes, I saw it as I came in. Oh, I think you've met my niece and nephew, Betty and Billy Fairfield. Yes, how are you? And a very special friend of the family, Jack Armstrong. How do you do? Glad to know you. What brings you around? Another order? Yes, Jim. Uh, here are the specifications. I'll pick up the equipment uh, whenever it's ready. Pardon the interruption, Jim, but those strange radiations are coming in again. I think you better have a look. Very well, Vic. Oh, I'm sorry, Pierce, but this is a special matter that can't include outsiders. I'm sure you'll understand. Why, of course, Jim. I really should be going anyway. We'll put your order into work as soon as possible. Well, that's good. Bye-bye. Goodbye. are present only on a certain ultra-high frequency band. Lately, I've been picking them up with unusual regularity. There's nothing reflected there yet, Vic. It's a dead screen. I'll turn up the visibility control. I see something now. There's the radiation. The source is obscure, to say the least. Well, Vic, what do you think? What we've witnessed is an emanation of deadly cosmic rays of an unclassified type. Cosmic rays? What are those? It's hard to say, but it's my belief that a human agency is responsible for them. But such experiments would be illegal. Well, the point of origin of those rays probably isn't in this country. They may have traveled halfway around the world. That's exactly what I think. If we can track them down, I'm sure we'll find the source in some remote part of the world. Maybe you ought to report what you know to the government. Not yet, Jack. There's no point in raising false scares. We'll wait till we learn something definite. Jim is right. I'll carry on with my investigations for a while and see where they lead. Good.
Well, we got the fuel, Pierce. We'll put it aboard ship tonight. Never mind that. I've just come from the Fairfield plant. That scientist, Hardy, has picked up some of the radiations. He's got to be stopped before he learns too much. But how? We'd never get past the guards. Blair and Slade could. They would be accepted by the guards as legitimate drivers for my export business. Marlin, contact the boys. Tell them I want Hardy taken alive. His scientific knowledge might prove valuable at point X. Well, it's kind of risky pulling a deal like that in daylight. I've already thought of that. And I have a little plan. From the Pierce Exporting Company. You remember us, don't you? Yeah. What are you doing around here at night after the plant's all closed up? Now, look, Pop, all I know is that we've come to get a special pickup. Yeah, I've got the order right here. Jim, Vic, sorry to disturb you at this hour, but I have some interesting news. Yes, I believe I have a clue to the location of those cosmic rays. All right, Hardy, let's go places. Hello. Hello. You're coming with us, Hardy. And yes, keep your trap shut. Uncle Jim? I don't know, except Vic must be in some sort of trouble. He called me, and while we were talking, the connection was broken. I tried to call him back, but he didn't answer. Did you call the guard at the gate? I tried, and he didn't answer either. Then there must be something wrong. Well, I hope nothing's happened to Vic. Apparently he was murdered. We better call the police. Yes, that's right. I wonder what happens to Vic. While we're waiting for the police, we'll look around. We might find a clue. I'll look in the office. Sure, unless this means something. A match folder. No, I don't think that'll help much. Any one of our customers might have dropped that. Well, I doubt if any of your customers would patronize a waterfront dive like the Remo restaurant. But Vic's kidnappers might. Well, then there may be a chance to rescue him. Let's get going. <laughs> it says here it doesn't open until six in the morning. Then we'll start the first thing in the morning, before breakfast. Before breakfast?
That's the place over there in the corner. Something very familiar in front of it, too. You ever see that truck before? Hey, that looks like the truck that picked up the equipment for Mr. Pierce. It certainly does. But you don't suppose Mr. Pierce knows anything about Vic, do you? No, but someone in that restaurant must know plenty. Look! Why, it's the same two drivers. I have an idea. I'll jump into the back of the truck and you follow in the car and maybe they'll lead us to where they're holding Vic prisoner. Hop to it, Billy. You two follow, but not too close. Turn off that side road ahead and keep going. I'll tell you where to stop. Let's tie this one up. Nice work, boys. One of them got away, but at least we've got this one for a consolation prize. Where's Vic Hardy? I don't know what you're talking about. No? Well, we'll keep you hogtied for a while. Maybe you'll remember when the police start investigating the murder of that guard at my plant. Bring him along, boys.
work, Jack. Let's get to the car and follow him. He may lead us to Vic. I think he did, too. You wait here. Billy and I will circle the building and see if there's another way in. Uncle Jim. I don't know. Hey, the door's open. Maybe he went inside. Let's find out. Vic! Hold it. Get your hands up. Come on, back up. We just caught these two paying hearty a visit. I just took care of Fairfield outside. I'll get busy and tie them up. strange place to which Vic Hardy has been taken. What's the secret of these mysterious cosmic rays? Don't miss The Far World, the second thrilling chapter of Jack Armstrong, the All-American Boy, at this theater next week. Jack, Billy, and Uncle Jim track the abductors of Vic Hardy to a waterfront warehouse. The boys manage to enter, but are surprised and overpowered in a fight. Hardy's abductors escape with their prisoner. The boys are trapped as a fire starts suddenly. Billy! 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 Come on! 
Come on, bail it. But it's locked. There must be some other way out of here. That's gasoline. We've got to get out of here. Let's try to smash that door down. Right. Help! Help! Somebody let us out! Help! Let us out! Come on, boy. Help! Help! Well, that's the first blowout I ever attended that they didn't serve food. Never mind your appetite. Those men are taking big party to the waterfront. Let's go. Hey, look! There come the Fairfields. You boys hold them off while I get Hardy the seaplane. You all right, Uncle Jim? Yes, I'm all right. They got away. Well, let them go. Our job is to rescue Vic. Vic's in that plane or I'll eat my hat. Yes, they've got Vic and there's much we can do about it. We can notify the police and the Coast Guard. That's exactly what I intend to do. Come on. Answer it, Uncle Jim. It may be good news. Fairfield speaking. I see. Well, keep working on it and let me know if anything turns up. What did they say? Nothing definite. The authorities haven't been able to trace the plane. It simply disappeared, vanished. But they must find it. Those men may kill poor Vic. I hardly think so. They could have done that at the start. No, I think Vic was captured for another purpose. I don't get it. What would anybody want with a harmless scientific inventor? Scientific inventor. Billy, you've hit it. Vic knew something that somebody wanted. Remember how he picked up those strange impulses on our radiation indicator? He may have stumbled on some dangerous information. He may have stumbled on more than that. By tracing those impulses to their source, we might be able to locate the place to which Vic has been taken. Oh, that sounds wonderful, Uncle Jim. Don't you think so, Billy? Well, you may be right, sis, but I can't think on an empty stomach. Come in. Hello, Pierce. What can I do for you? You can explain to me why a shipment was not made on my order. A shipment was made. I waited for it. The truck never arrived. That's odd. The truck left here, all right. Was it one of yours? No, uh, my equipment was tied up. I had to rent that one. Then we've all been fooled. Those were fake truck drivers who came here just to get a line on Vic. I'm afraid I don't understand. Is something wrong? Well, to tell you the truth, Pierce, Vic has been kidnapped. You're joking. Now, who could have done a thing like that? We hope to have the answer to that soon. Jack, you and I will stay here to triangulate on the impulses. Meanwhile, Billy, you and Betty go down to the airport. Make arrangements to have a plane stand by until needed. And be sure there's space on the plane to set up our equipment. Right, oh, Uncle Jim. You know, if there's anything I can do, please let me know. I have as much interest in Vic as the rest of you. What is this place? Where are we? I'm not the talkative type, chum. Besides what you don't see can't hurt us. Start walking. Thank you.
Apparently there's visitors in the tunnel. Doubtless our expected guest. Here's your man, Professor. Excellent, Blair. The ruler will be quite pleased. Would somebody mind telling me what this is all about? Gladly, Mr. Hardy. Welcome to my domain. Where'd that voice come from? You are not here to ask questions, but to listen. You, Victor Hardy, have been selected as a worthy associate of one of the world's foremost scientists, Professor Hogard Zorn. As an inventor, you will be interested in learning that the professor is on the brink of mastering an achievement several steps beyond atomic energy. It is a cosmic beam annihilator. We believe that you possess certain knowledge valuable to us in completing the master model. You will enjoy the privilege of working under Professor Zorn's direction. Do you accept? Speak. Even if I believe these claims, I'm not interested in methods of destruction. Sorry, I refuse. I'm afraid you're acting rather hastily, Mr. Hardy. Professor Zorn is in a position to offer proof. Will you come this way, please? During the demonstration, you will wear these rubber gloves and this helmet. They will protect the skin against certain deadly emanations. I'll see you later, Professor. Very well, Blair. This is a block of chrome steel, one of the strongest metals known to man. Now for the demonstration. You are familiar with the power of heat. That is the basis of this device. My experiments with uranium have given me silurium, a substance derived from the sun, which forms the heart of this mechanism. The sun has given us life, Mr. Hardy, but I've also made it produce death. Watch. There you have it, Mr. Hardy. The work of the cosmic beam annihilator in its developmental stage. Consider this mechanism, constructed with your help, to many times its power. We could destroy cities, entire nations. This is sheer madness. You'll never succeed. Perhaps not without your help. The choice is yours, Mr. Hardy. Shall you stand with the conquerors or lie with the dead? Very well, Professor Zorn. I will work with you. Excellent, excellent. This laboratory will be your home and your workshop. You are free to enjoy all its privileges, but can go nowhere else. Any attempt on your part to escape would be useless. Come, I will show you why. This graph indicates our position. We are on a volcanic island, a great distance from the nearest mainland. Our triangulation seemed to check. The impulses appear to emanate from a point of land thousands of miles from here, south by west. And for all we know, Vic's being held prisoner there. Jack's right, Uncle Jim. There's a plane waiting for us at the airport. Why don't we pack up a lot of food and go look for the place? The radiation indicator would help us find it. Well, it's a risky venture with very little to go on. Still, it's our only clue. All right, we'll do it. But first, I'll have to notify the government of our findings. Billy and I will get the equipment ready. Good. I'll help you, Jack. Oh, hello, 
Pierce. Come on in. What can I do for you? I thought I'd drop by and see if you had any word from Vic Hardy. No, we think he's been taken to an island somewhere in the Pacific. How did you learn that? By calculating the distance and direction of certain radionic emanations that Vic was investigating when he disappeared. Well, that all might mean nothing. Besides, how can you be sure that you can find this island, much less determine that Vic is there? We've arranged for that. Within an hour, Jack, Billy, Betty, and I will leave the airport. By means of a radiation indicator, we hope to trace these impulses to the source. I see. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have my affairs to put in order. Why, well, certainly, Jim. I have things to do, too. I wish you luck. Thank you. Let's go, mates. A few lovers I know are going to get their pictures in the paper laying down. <laughs> <laughs> What's that ahead, Jack? Looks like the road's blocked. They must be doing some repair work. Strange. There wasn't anything there yesterday when Billy and I drove to the airport. That's right. Maybe a trick to get us to stop. Step on it, Jack. Hey, but we'll go right through the barrier. That's the idea. Hang on, here we go. How did they get wise? Our only chance is to overtake them before they reach that airport. Sled. She's wide open. There's a car following us, Uncle Jim. Step on it, Jack. Try and nail them, Walmart. See if you can puncture their tires. Faster. They're shooting at us. Here, use this. That stopped them. That was almost bad enough to ruin my appetite. <laughs> Nothing could be that bad. Radiation indicated will work, Uncle Jim. If it doesn't, Billy, we're sure in a wild goose chase. Look, it's flashing. We picked up the radiation. That means we're on the right track. Those impulses will act like a radio beam and guide us straight to their point of origin. Here's a code message from Pierce. Jack Armstrong and the Fairfields managed to get away on a plane. They're using an indicator to trace our radiations to this island. Well, we've got to stop them. Weckler, hook up the electronic deactivator. Yes, sir. What are you going to do? Arrange a special welcome for several unwanted guests. Come, Mr. Hardy, I think you'll find this interesting. This instrument is capable of producing air waves 
that can effectively freeze the controls of any engine within a given radius. Those people on that plane are my friends. They'll crash and be killed. Raise the outside antenna. The outside antenna is raised. yet, but evidently we're approaching something. dangers lie ahead on this menacing island. What fiendish plot against humanity is being hatched in this sinister cavern? Don't fail to see Island of Deception, the third thrill-packed chapter of Jack Armstrong, the All-American Boy, at this theater next week. Flying to an island from which they believe the cosmic rays are coming, Jack and his companions are attacked by a mysterious ray which disables their engines. Forced to descend, they drop rapidly toward the menacing rocks below where... The controls are frozen. We're going into a dive. All right, Betty? I am now. All right, Billy? Yeah, I'm all right, but I'm hungry. I wonder where we can get some food. Which way do you think we ought to go? Let's try this way. The plane and all in it are destroyed. Now we will continue preparing the area globe for flight. I saw so many rocks in all my life. I wonder where they all came from. They're volcanic. This island was probably pushed up from the sea by an eruption. Gee, I hope it don't sink before we get off. That looks like a trail over there. Well, let's follow it. It's a trail, all right. I wonder where it leads. Well, that's what we're going to find out. activator did a stuff group the plane crashed were there any survivors i don't think so unless they parachuted make a search 
Remember Pierce Radio, the Jack Armstrong, the Fairfields were headed this way? That's right. Well, if you find any of them... I know what to do. No. Bring them here alive. I want to question them. Well, if that's the way you want it. You strange white man fly down from Skyburn. They come this way. All white men, evil. Tabori, signal warriors, go. Sounds like those drums are coming from Yuma's village. Maybe he's found what we're looking for. Maybe he has. Take cover. and his gang will save us the trouble of getting rid of them. We'd better take a hand before they get chopped to pieces. Rude's orders were to bring them back alive. the idea I don't want those people to recognize me not just yet at least are you folks all right yes thanks for helping us you didn't get here a minute too soon well we've been searching for your plane ever since it cracked up Rude wants you brought to his place I hope he's got something to eat who's Grude? he runs a trading post Hey, we better get started before the natives decide to come back. Lead the way. That man looks familiar to me. He does to me, too. I'm sure I've heard that voice before. But we've never been here before. Well, come on. No, I am the only white man on the island. That is, with the exception of a few beachcombers that don't count. Our only link to civilization is a tramp steamer that puts in here every three months. So you're hoping for a quick rescue, I'm Oh, afraid. there'll be plenty of people looking for us. Has another plane landed here recently, Mr. Grood? No, not that I know of. Are you sure of that? Well, the natives would have told me to add. That is, the friendly natives of Princess Allura, and not those renegades who attacked you. The guest hut is ready. I'm afraid we're making a lot of trouble for you, Mr. Grood. Not at all. You don't know what your coming to this island means to me. Now, if you will go with him, he'll show you your quarters. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Not at all. speaking. Jack Armstrong and the Fairfields are still with us. Unless some way is found to stop radiations, we'll have more visitors. All radiations have been eliminated. But with the others here, don't you think that the area globe test should be postponed? There must be no delay. The test will take place at dawn and see that Hardy is there to witness it. Very well. Your orders will be carried out. Oh. 
I'm sorry that your sleep was interrupted, Mr. Hardy, but you have been accorded a great privilege. You are about to witness the test of our area globe. I'm afraid I don't understand. You know that we have been developing a cosmic ray gun of great destructive power. It will be aimed at the Earth from the area globe. Come with me, please. By means of rocket impulses and gravity control, the area globe will take off from this island. It will proceed to a point in space where the uh, gravity of the sun and that of the Earth neutralize each other. At this great height, our cosmic ray annihilator can be aimed at any spot on Earth, ready to destroy every country which refuses to obey our ruler. I see. This is Dr. Al Buer. He will command the aerial globe on this flight. I am honored to serve the ruler. Rector, you will see that Mr. Hardy is rendered incapable of causing any accidents. It is about time, gentlemen. We will now proceed to the area globe. We uh, really need another man, Professor, to help handle the controls. All right. Lessops, you go with the doctor. Get into your flying clothes. Mr. Hardy, you will see the takeoff from ground level. Good luck, my friend. All will go well, you'll see. Lead the way, Blair. Secure the door for play, Blackburn. Yes, sir. Check all controls. Prepare for takeoff. Check the oxygen, Mr. Lessons. Yes, sir. The area globe should rise in one quarter of a minute. Start gravity control. Fire rockets. See what we have accomplished, Mr. Hardy. We count on you to help us reach our final goal. World domination. Weckler, conduct Mr. Hardy back to his quarters. Blair, what's to be done about the intruders? I've got my orders. They'll be taken care of this morning. I miss my guess, that native is going to accuse us of the crime. We'd better get to the trading post and ask Rude's advice. Of course, there's no doubt in my mind about your innocence. 
But how Princess Allura and Naga will react is another question. Especially Naga. Who's Naga? The princess's chief advisor, sort of a prime minister. Don't you think we ought to go to the native village now and get this thing straightened out? It looks as though you've been saved the trouble. It seems the village have come to you. That's Princess Alora, the head of the tribe. The man at her side is Naga. You see that little fella next to her? Well, he's the one that put the finger on us. We come for white people who kill Rufu. We've killed no one, Princess. There's a murderer around somewhere, but it's not one of us. Song, we see white man with knife in hand. Your Highness, you can't condemn people without a fair trial. Let white men and white women come to Sacred Grotto. Our god Zelta decide if their hands clean. I don't like this. There's not much you can do about it. If you take my advice, you'll play along with them. Come. Summon the panther woman so that she may entreat our god Exalta to manifest himself to us. Groot doesn't do something to stop this ritual. I don't know why, but if he's going to help us, it better be pretty soon. It can't be too soon to suit me. Voice. One of my people lies slain by a white man's knife in a white man's hand. Blood must be washed out with blood. I, Exalta, order that the white people be taken to the pit of everlasting fire and hurled into its depth. I, Exalta, have spoken. Run for it! Find a way to help Jack and Betty. We've got to lose those native guards first. Come on. You 
you will make way for your friends. They won't escape long. Will these ferocious natives wipe out the rest of the little expedition? Why are these conspirators still holding Vic Hardy a prisoner? Be sure to see Into the Chasm, the fourth action chapter of Jack Armstrong, the All-American Boy, at this theater next week.